from downtown San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit 2018, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here at the Park 55 in San Francisco covering the IBM CDO Strategy Summit. I'm here with Joel Horwitz, who's the Vice President of Digital Partnerships and Offerings at IBM. Good to see you again, Joel. Thanks, great to be here. So Thanks it was for just, me. you're very welcome. It was just, uh, let's see, was it last month, I think? Yeah, it's hard yeah, to keep track, right? right? It's, and uh, uh, we were talking about your new role, the, the importance of partnerships. One of the things I, I want to, well, let's, let's talk about your role, but I really want to get into it's innovation, and we talked yeah. about this at Think because it's so critical, in my opinion anyway, that you can attract partnerships, innovation partnerships, startups, you know, established companies, et cetera, yeah. to really help drive that innovation, right? It, it, it takes a team of people. IBM can't do it on its own, and so. Yeah, I mean, look, IBM is the leader in innovation, as we all know. Um, we're the market leader for patents that we you know, put out each year. Um, and how you get that technology into the hands of the real innovators, the developers, the long tail ISVs, you know, our partners out there, um, that's, that's, the, that's the challenging part at times. And so what we've been up to is, you know, really looking at how we make it easier um, for partners to partner with IBM, how we make it easier for developers to work with IBM. So we have a number of areas that we've been adding. So for example, um, we've added a whole IBM code um, portal, so if you go to developers.ibm.com forward slash code, um, you can actually see hundreds of code patterns that we've created um, to help really any client, any partner get started using IBM's technology and to innovate. Yeah, so, um, and that's critical, I mean, you're right, because it, to me, innovation is a combination of invention, which is what you guys do really yeah. well, and then it's adoption, which is what your customers yeah. are, are all about. Yeah. Um, you come from the data science yeah. world. We're here at a, the Chief Data Officer Summit. Mm -hmm. Kind of, what's the intersection between data science and, and CDOs? What are you seeing there? Yeah, I mean, you know, so when I was here last, it was about two years ago in 2015. Actually, maybe three years ago. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, the Spark. Yeah, Spark Summit Technology and Center yeah, right. and the Spark Summit, and yeah. we were here. I was here at the uh, Chief Data Officer Summit, and um, and it was great. And at that time, I think a lot of the conversation was really not that different than what I'm seeing today, which is how do you manage all of your data assets? I think you know, a big part of doing good data science, which is my kind of background, is really having a good understanding of what your data governance is, what your data catalog is. So you know, we introduced the Watson Studio at Think, Right. Um, and actually what's nice about that is it brings a lot of this together. So if you look in the market, in the data market today, you know, we used to segment it by a few things like data gravity, data movement, data science, right, and data governance. Um, and, and those are kind of the four themes that I continue to see. And so outside of IBM, I would contend that those are relatively separate kind of tools that are disconnected. In fact, uh, Dinesh Nirmal, who's our um, you know, engineer on the analytics side, um, head of development there, he um, wrote a great blog uh, just recently about um, how you can have some great machine learning, you can have some great data, but if you can't operationalize that, then really you can't put it to use. And so it's funny to me because we've been focused on this challenge and IBM is making the right steps. In my, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously biased, but we're making some great you know, strides toward unifying the, this tool chain, which is data management to data science to operationalizing you know, machine learning. So that's what we're starting to see with Watson Studio. Well, I, I always push Dinesh on this. It's like, okay, you've got a, a collection of tools, but are you bringing those together? And he, he flat out says, no, we developed this a lot of this from scratch. Yes, yeah. we, we bring in the best of the knowledge that we have there, but we're not trying to just cobble together a bunch of disparate tools yeah. with a UI layer. Right, It's right. really a fundamental foundation that you're trying to build. Well, what's really interesting about that, um, that piece is that, yeah, I think a lot of folks have cobbled together a UI layer. So we formed a partnership, coming back to the partnership you know, view, is with a company called Lightbend, um, who's based here in uh, San Francisco as well as in, in Europe. And the reason why we did that wasn't just because of the fact that reactive development, if you're not familiar with reactive, it's essentially Scala, you know, Aka, Play, this whole framework, um, that basically allows um, developers to write once and it kind of scales up you know, um, with demand. In fact, um, Verizon actually used um, our platform with Lightbend uh, to launch the iPhone 10. 
um, and they show dramatic improvements. Now what's exciting about Lightban is, is the fact that application developers are developing with Reactive, but if you turn around, you'll also now be able to operationalize models with Reactive as well, because it's, it's basically you know, a single platform to move between these two worlds. So what we've continued to see is data science kind of separate from the application world, right? Really kind of, you know, AI and cloud as different universes. The reality is that for any enterprise or any company to really innovate, you have to find a way to bring those two worlds together to get the most use out of it. Furrier always says data is the new development kit. He said this, I think, five or six years ago, yeah. and it's really becoming becoming true. I mean, you guys have tried to make an attempt and have done a pretty good job of trying to bring those worlds together in a, in a single platform. Um, what do you call it, the Watson Data Platform? Yeah, is Watson that right? Data yeah. Platform, um, now Watson Studio, and I think yeah. the other, so one side of it is us trying to, not really trying, but us actually bringing together these disparate systems, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we are kind of a systems company, we're IT. Um, but not only that, but bringing our trained algorithms and our trained um, models to the developers. So for example, we also did a partnership with Unity at the end of last year that's now just reaching um, some pretty good um, you know, growth in terms of bringing the Watson SDK to game developers on the Unity platform. So again, it's this idea of you know, bringing you know, the game developer, you know, the application developer in closer contact with these trained models and these trained algorithms, and that's where you're seeing incredible things happen. So for example, um, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which I don't know how many Trekkies we have here at the CDO Summit. A few over know, here probably. Few, yeah. Maybe, yeah, a couple. <laughs> um, they're using uh, our SDK in Unity to basically allow um, a gamer uh, to use voice commands through the headset, through a VR headset, to talk to other players in, in the virtual you know, game. So um, we're going to see more. I can't really disclose too much what we're doing there, but there's some cool stuff coming out of that partnership. Real immersive experience driving a lot of data. Now you're part of the, the digital, digital business group. I like yeah. the term digital business because we talk about it all the time. Digital business, what's the difference between a digital business and a business? What's the how they use data? Yeah. You're a data person. Yeah. Um, what, what does that mean to, to you're part of the digital business group? Uh, is that an internal facing thing, an external facing thing, both? It's really both. I mean, so our chief um, digital officer, Bob Lord, um, you know, he has a, a presentation that he'll give um, where he starts out and he goes, you know, when I tell people I'm the chief digital officer, they usually think I just manage the website, right? I think that's probably, <laughs> you know, if I tell people I'm a chief data officer, it means I manage our data, you know, in governance over here. The reality is that I think, you know, these chief digital officer, chief uh, data officers, I mean, they're really responsible for business transformation, right. right? And so, if you actually look at what we're doing, um, I think on both sides is we're using data, we're using you know marketing technology, MarTech, um, like Optimizely, like Segment, like some of these great partners of ours, um, to really look at how we can quickly A/B test, right? Get user feedback, you know, to look at how we actually test different offerings in market. And so really what we're doing is we're setting up you know, a testing platform to bring not only our you know, um, traditional offers to market, like DB2, mainframe, et cetera, but also bring new offers to market, like blockchain and quantum and others, and mm. actually figure out how we get better product market fit. Um, what actually, you know, one thing, one story that comes to mind is, um, if you've seen the movie Hidden Figures, oh yeah. there's this um, scene where Kevin Costner, I know this is going to look not great for IBM, but I'm going to say it anyways, which is, you know, Kevin Costner has like a sledgehammer and he's like trying to break down the wall to get the mainframe in the room. I mean, that's what it feels like sometimes because we, we create the best technology but we forget sometimes about the last mile. Yeah. You know, like we got to break down the wall. Where am I going to put it? To, you know, to get it in the room. And so, so honestly, I think that's a lot of what we're doing. We're, cr we're bridging that last mile between these different audiences. So between developers, between ISVs, between you know, commercial buyers, like how do we actually make this technology not just accessible to large enterprise, which are our main clients, but also to the, the other ecosystems and other audiences out there. Well, so that's interesting, Joel, because as a potential partner of IBM, they want, obviously, your go-to-market, massive company and yeah. great distribution channel, but at the same time, you want more than that. Yeah. You, from, you know, you want to have a closer, IBM always you know, focuses on partnerships that have you know, intrinsic value. Yeah. Um, so you talked about offerings, you talked about quantum, blockchain, we, off camera talking about cloud containers. Yeah. I'd say cloud and containers, 
maybe a little closer mm -hmm. than, than those others, but those others are going to take a lot of market development. But yeah. um, So what are the offerings that you guys are, are bringing? How do they get into the hands of your partners? I mean, the commonality with all of these, all of the emerging offerings, if you ask me, is the distributed nature of the offering. Mm. So if you look at blockchain, it's a distributed ledger, right? It's a distributed transaction chain that's secure. If you look at data, right, really, and like we can hark back to like say Hadoop, right, before object storage, right. it's distributed storage, right? So it's not just storing you know, on your hard drive locally, it's storing on a distributed network, right, of servers that are all over the world in data centers. Um, if you look at you know, cloud, right, and containers, what you're really doing is not you know, running your application on individual server that can go down. You're using containers because you want to distribute that application over a large network of servers so that if one server goes down, you're not going to be hosed. And so I think the fundamental shift that you're seeing is this distributed nature, which in essence is cloud. So I think cloud is just kind of a synonym, in my opinion, for distributed nature of our business. That's interesting, and that brings up, you're right, cloud and, and big data slash Hadoop. We don't talk about Hadoop much anymore, but it kind of got it all started mm -hmm. with that notion of leave the data where it is. That's right. And it's the same thing with cloud. You can't just stuff your business into the public cloud. You, you got to bring the cloud to your data. That's right. Um, and, and so, but that brings up a whole new set of challenges, which obviously you're in a position to, to help solve. Performance, latency, yeah. physics you know, yeah. come into play. Yeah, you know? physics is a rough one. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard to avoid that yeah, one. You're, you're your best people yeah. are working on it though. <laughs> so some other partnerships that you want to sort of yeah, no, I mean, we have um, some really great, so I think the, the key kind of partnership, I would say, area um, that I would, I would allude to is one of the things, and you, you kind of reference this, is a lot of our partners, big or small, you know, want to work with our top clients. Right, so they want to work with our top, you know, banking clients. They want to, because these are, you know, if you look at like, for example, Maersk and what we're doing with them around blockchain, and frankly, mm -hmm. talk about innovation. You know, they're innovating like containers for real, like not, you know, virtual containers. And that's a joint venture, right? Yeah, it yeah. is, and so it's exciting because, you know, what we're bringing to market is I also um, lead our um, startup programs called the Global Entrepreneurship Program. Mm. And so what I'm focused on doing, and you'll probably see more to come uh, this quarter, is how do we actually bridge that end to end? How do you, you know, if you're a startup or a small business, you know, ultimately reach that kind of global business partner, you know, um, you know, level, right? And so kind of bridging that, that end to end. So we're starting to bring out a number of different incentives for partners like co-marketing. So we'll help startups when they're early, like figure out product market fit. We'll give you, you know, free credits to use our innovative, um, um, technology, and we'll also bring you into a number of clients um, to basically help you, you know, not burn all of your cash on creating your own, you know, marketing channel. God knows I did that when I was at a startup. So, so I think we're doing a lot to kind of bridge that end to end and help, you know, any partner kind of come in and then grow with IBM. I think that's where we're headed. I think that's a critical part of your job because, I mean, obviously IBM's known for its, you know, global 2000, big enterprise presence, but startups, Again, you know, fuel that that innovation fire. So, being able to attract them, which you're you're proving you can, providing whatever it is, you know, access, early access to cloud services, or like you say, these other offerings that you're producing, in addition to that go-to-market. Because, you know, you, you look. It's funny. We always talk about how uh, how, how uh, efficient, capital efficient software is. Yeah. But then you have these companies, you know, raising hundreds of millions of dollars, why? Because they got to do promotion, marketing, mm. sales, yep. you know, go to market. Right? Yeah, it's really expensive. I mean, you look at, you know, most startups, like their biggest, you know, ticket item is usually marketing and, and sales, right? right. Um, and building channels, and so, yeah, if you're, you know, we're talking to um, a number of partners who want to work with us because of the fact that it's not just like the, the direct kind of channel, it's also, you know, as you kind of mentioned, like there's, there's other, um, you know, challenges that you have to overcome when you're working with a larger company. For example, like security is a big one, yeah. you know. Um, GDPR compliance now is a big one. Um, you know, and just making sure that things don't fall over is a big one. And so a lot of, you know, partners work with us because ultimately a number of, you know, the decision makers in these larger enterprises are going, well, you know, I trust IBM, and if IBM says you're, you're good, then I believe you. And so, um, you know, that's where we're kind of um, starting to pull partners in and pull an ecosystem towards us because of the fact that, you know, we can take them through that level of certification. So we have a number of, you know, free online courses. Um, so if you go to, you know, partners, uh, excuse me, ibm.com forward slash partners forward slash learn, 
Um, there's a number of blockchain courses that you can learn today, and we'll actually give you a digital certificate that's actually certified on our own blockchain, which we're actually a first of a kind to do that, which I think is pretty slick and it's accredited at some of the universities. So, um, you know, I think that's where people are looking to IBM and other leaders in this, in this industry is to help them become experts in their in this technology, and especially in this emerging technology. Well, I love that blockchain action because I mean, it's such a growing and interesting and innovative field, but it needs players like IBM that can bring credibility, you know, enterprise grade, whether it's you know, security or just, as I say, credibility, because there's you know, so much of negative connotations associated with blockchain and crypto, but, but companies like, like IBM coming to the table, enterprise companies, yeah. and building that ecosystem out is, is in my view, crucial, so. Yeah, no, it takes, um, it takes a village, you know? I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of folks, I mean, that's a big reason why I came to IBM, um, you know, three, year, three, four years ago, was because when I was in startup land, I used to work for H2O, I mm -hmm. worked for Alpine Data Labs, Datamir back in the Hadoop days, and what I realized was that, you know, it's, it's an opportunity cost, so you, you can't really drive true global innovation transformation in some of these bigger companies because there's only so much that you can really kind of bite off. And so, you know, at IBM it's been a really rewarding experience because we have done things like, for example, we partnered with Girls Who Code, mm -hmm. um, Treehouse, Udacity. So there's a number of, you know, ed early educators that we've partnered with to bring code to, to bring technology to that frankly would never have access to some of this stuff, you know, some of this right. technology. Um, if we didn't form these alliances and we, if we didn't join these partners, uh, these partnerships. So I'm, you know, I'm very excited about, you know, the future of, of IBM. I'm very excited about the future of what our partners are doing with IBM because, geez, you know, the cloud and everything that we're doing to make this accessible is, is bar none. I mean, it's, it's great. Well, I can tell you're excited, you know, the spring in your step. Uh, <laughs> always a lot of energy, Joel. Really thanks. appreciate you coming yeah, on to theCUBE. My pleasure. Great to see you again. Yeah, thanks, Dave. All right, yeah. you're welcome. All right. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. We're at the IBM CDO Strategy Summit in San Francisco. You're watching theCUBE.